So welcome back to the channel. Today I have a 2022 Ford Bronco Black Diamond Sasquatch. Now this is actually a very nice spec of the Bronco two-door as this one is equipped with the mid package, I do believe. So the Black Diamond is kind of the more off-road variant of the Ford Bronco. And then of course you add the mid package adds a few luxury amenities, kind of some necessities to some people. And then of course the Sasquatch adds the nice 35 inch tires, lift and a bunch of other stuff as well. So let's go ahead and check out the Ford Bronco for the very first time together, kind of go over the exterior interior and and of course take it for a drive. So the Fort, wait, wait, what is that? Oh, oh, you guys probably couldn't see that uh, Jeep Wrangler over there behind this uh, big old Sasquatch, but two-door Wrangler. So all joking aside, this is a 2022 Ford Bronco Black Diamond two-door, once again with the Sasquatch package. I believe this also has the mid package as well. Now looking on the exterior, this is the first time I've actually been able to hands-on with the new Ford Bronco. I know this has been out for well over one year now, but they're still extremely hard to get. And uh, so it's kind of cool that I get to kind of drive this one today, kind of feel it out for myself. And again, compare it to the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, which I do have quite a bit of experience with. So up front, this is the base LED headlight setup, I do believe. So these are LED reflector headlights, LED turn signals in the center portion, and of course your side markers on the side. This one has the steel front bumper, which is a modular bumper, so you can't put the winch install in it, take some of the other end caps and other portions off uh, and really customize it to your liking. And I believe there is a bull bar or bash bar that can go up the front as well. Bronco is nice front and center here in the white letters, looks very aggressive, very nice. And I think Ford did a really good job with the new Ford Bronco styling, really tied in some of the retro design themes with a modern take on it. Of course, this one does have the Sasquatch. So you have the 35 inch Goodyear Wrangler Territory tires. They are very aggressive and uh, very capable. One of the largest tires available on a stock production vehicle still. Then you have the black diamond Sasquatch badge here on the fender. Mirrors, I do believe are heated, do have blind spot detection, and they are mounted kind of on the cowl portion, not on the door. Uh, so when you open up the door, the mirror does not move. It kind of stays stationary in place, which is a nice theme. And of course you can remove them, I do believe as well. Proximity entry on the door handles. You have the rock sliders down below. Out back, I think you find some equipment because this one has the mid trim level package to so get rear parking sensors. This is a rear steel bumper. There's your Bronco badge on the tailgate. Incandescent lighting, which is a little bit disappointing out back. Uh, would be nice to have LEDs, but of course those are available on the higher trims of the Bronco. Full size 35 inch spare tire. Recovery point here on the left side. This one does not have a trailering hitch, which is a little bit bizarre, but of course that is available. Now, I believe this is also the molded in color or the MIC top as well. I know Ford has had some issues at the launch of Bronco. I believe this one has the updated version being a 2022 model year, uh, but that is just something to keep in mind. It doesn't look too bad. I think the black Wrangler tops look a little bit better. And of course the Wrangler also offers a body color option. I believe Ford is working on that to kind of match uh, what the Wrangler currently offers. Now here on the inside, this is where I kind of have the most nitpicks about the new Bronco. Now Ford's kind of interior are a little bit on the plasticky side of things. Now I know the Wrangler is not very nice um, in general in comparison to some of the other vehicles on the market, uh, but you do have a kind of small padded armrest, power locks on the door, a storage net similar to that of the Wrangler. But other than that, the door is pretty much pretty plain Jane, and that is because it's pretty easy to remove uh, with a lift point down here at the bottom. Manual six-way adjustment seat. This might be have lumbar as well, so it might be technically like an eight-way seat. But you can see it has some nicer materials. This is one of the highlights, I think, of the interior of the Bronco are these seats uh, with not only the materials, but I think they are gonna be quite comfortable as well. There's a little Bronco in the backrest portion. There's a quick look at the dashboard. I do kind of like the blue accents here on the dash, stitching on the seat and some of the other materials such as the grab handle over there looks quite nice, especially like again with the silver exterior and kind of this grayish black interior. So here in this spec of the Bronco, you do get a partially digital gauge cluster. I believe this is a seven inch screen in the center. It does look quite nice. I have to say it is a little bit more up to date than that of the Wrangler, but of course the JL has a nice smaller screen in the middle as well. Uh, to kind of configure it with the infotainment. This is the eight inch SYNC 4 infotainment. Uh, so you have a, a lot of nice up-to-date features being it is SYNC 4. Uh, you have built-in navigation on this spec. You can control some of the vehicle settings. Of course, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Sears XM, AM, FM, USB, Bluetooth, all the usual stuff for technology, uh, which is nice, but they do offer a larger screen as well on some of the upper trims of the Bronco. Leather wrap steering wheel. I do not believe it is heated, but you do have heated front seats that are on right now. 
Ford Copilot 360 Assist. Um, smart cruise control and all that stuff is available on the Bronco. I'm not exactly sure if this particular one has it, uh, but it does have a lot of the other safety features such as blind spot, lane keep, stuff like that. There's your wipers on the left side. Headlight controls are here to the left of the steering wheel. Electronic parking brake down there as well. And then up top here on the dash, this is kind of hard plastic material where I know the Wrangler is kind of a soft touch. So that is kind of a downgrade to me here on the Ford. But you do have a little mount up there for GoPro or other cameras, which is very cool. I wish Jeep would kind of implement that. Since this one is a Sasquatch, of course, there's the front and rear locking differentials. And of course, the trail turn assist all activated up here via these dashboard buttons. But other than that, pretty standard interior, lots of hard touch plastics. Uh, but again, this is kind of the more off-road spec. Dual zone automatic climate with a lot of hard touch buttons. Very nice, especially if you're wearing gloves like today. Easy to control knobs, so all that is very nice to see. 10 speed automatic. This one does have the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6. There's your little Bronco Ford badge down here, built in America. All that is very cool. USB, other inputs. Here is your GOAT modes or go over all terrain modes. So two high, four high, four low, four automatic, as well as dedicated terrain modes by turning that knob. Here's where your power front windows are, as well as your power mirror controls, because once again, the doors are very easy to remove. So that is all nice centrally located. So it is very interesting to see kind of this MIC top and the way that you kind of can see the composite materials here on the back side. It would be nice to have some sound deadening on them. I uh, will go ahead and see when I do the driving portion, whether or not this is going to creak, make noise here. Um, it's just under freezing. So it will be interesting to see if it kind of rattles, makes noises or anything like that. Auxiliary buttons, six of them up top. Uh, very cool, you can of course hook winches, lights, uh, all the off-road accessories up to these switches. LED illumination on the inside, looks like you do have an auto dimming rear view mirror, which is very cool. And the second row of the Bronco is going to be a little bit bigger than that of the two-door Wrangler because this vehicle is slightly larger than the two-door Wrangler. I do like the fact that they have split seats, so kind of each side can be folded down manually, where the Wrangler just has a bench seat that all folds down in one piece, so I would rather have this. And in terms of ports and stuff in the back, looks like you do have a 110 volt outlet as well as some USB ports. So taking a look at the tailgate space. Now this is a hydraulic tailgate, which is a little bit interesting. The Wranglers is not. And behind the second row seats, there actually is a very good amount of space for a two door vehicle. But again, this is larger than the two door Wrangler. So that is kind of expected. There's your LED lighting, 12 volt outlet, some storage on the uh, right side. Then you have, of course, have your connections for the hard top, which can be easily removed and kind of put in place here via these plugs. Underneath, just a little bit more storage. There's your jack and some of your roadside tools. But other than that, pretty basic interior. You can see you do have hard floors out back, so no carpet or anything. And that is probably just due to this trim level. There are some carpeted floor mats. But uh, yeah, overall, a very similar type of vehicle to that of the Wrangler, as we can see here in a two-door sport spec with the soft top. Uh, so yeah, both kind of body on frame vehicles, uh, off-road capable at that. So let's go ahead and see how this drives. Unfortunately, we're not going to be taking it off-road or anything like that today. But I do kind of want to see how the Sasquatch package drives along with the Bronco in general in comparison to the Wrangler Rubicon, which I do have quite a bit of experience with. I will say immediately that 2.7 twin turbo V6 makes some good noises. Uh, but the four cylinder kind of two liter turbo and the Wrangler also makes some cool turbo noses. Uh, but the brake feel, wow, you really feel those 35 inch tires. Transmission so far in my few minutes of driving actually shifts very smoothly. So I am very impressed with that. This is a 10 speed, so a few more gears than I'm used to, but does pretty good so far. Suspension feels fairly smooth as well. Um, the, these aren't huge bumps, but obviously in a normal passenger vehicle with smaller tires, less sidewall, you're going to feel most bumps a little bit more, but it's soaking it up without really any issues here in the Bronco. Uh, but again, I hope so, given this is the Sasquatch uh, off-road oriented package with, of course, the huge tires. And I guess from my vantage point, the seat is about one or two clicks up in terms of the height of the seat. Uh, most of the times I like to drive with my seat all the way down, but in this vehicle, uh, about two pumps up was enough for me. But I kind of do like the fact of the hood and fender design here on the Bronco. And of course the mounts on the exterior that kind of give you the corners of the front of the vehicle. Now, of course you do have the massive side flares, the massive wheels and tires about four or five inches beyond those corners of the vehicle. 
but it gives you an idea of where the size of the vehicle is in terms of the front of you. Now down to the side, you don't really have any true reference points in terms of the corner, but it is nice to see kind of forward visibility. Uh, you do see those corners of the vehicle. Now with a Jeep Wrangler, you would similarly see where the corners of the vehicles are, but you're actually looking kind of at the fender flares, kind of the tops of them, especially if you have a high flare Rubicon model. Uh, so it's kind of similar design there, just a little bit different implementation. And now that I'm getting up to a little bit higher speed, I definitely noticed the tire noise of these all-terrain tires, and of course the lack of sound deadening inside of these off-road modular type of vehicles, such as the Wrangler, and of course this is the Bronco. Uh, you definitely hear wind noise kind of passing over the top of you. It's not very well insulated, and you do hear the road noise and kind of the growl of the off-road tires. Yeah, and coming to the stop here on this 55 mile an hour road at the stoplight, I have to say the brake pedal feel is not super amazing on tip-in or initial application, but as soon as you get just a little bit farther into the pedal, it definitely stiffens, stiffens up and feels quite nice. So not a huge deal, something you would get used to on a daily basis living with a vehicle. And in terms of acceleration, of course, this one has the 2.7 liter twin turbo V6. Here in this two-door Bronco, not an issue with power at all. Um, I know some people kind of complained uh, with the power output of this engine Sasquatch package in the four-door versions of the Bronco, but here with the two-door, I don't really see any issues with it. I think it accelerates quite nice. So yeah, no real issues in terms of power output here in this two-door Sasquatch with the uh, larger engine option in the Bronco. And of course, it's nice to see that you get a turbo boost gauge as well. So heading into some of the rougher pavement that I normally drive on, it's definitely pretty bouncy in here, similar to that of the Wrangler that I'm used to. Wouldn't say it's any worse, not really any better that I can tell. Handles the bump, soaks them up quite well though. The suspension has a good amount of dampening. Back end did move around a little bit right there, but that's kind of something to be uh, considered normal with a solid axle vehicle. Hey look, a Mustang Mach-E. So far in this drive, I had not heard the top creaking, squeaking, rattling, anything at all. Um, I don't know, given this vehicle only has a little bit over 900 miles, has it ever been removed before? Probably not, but it is something to note that I really haven't heard any noise coming from this top, uh, which is very good to see and very good to hear because those rattles over time definitely get quite annoying, especially when they're right inside of your head. Now, overall, my experience with the Wrangler tops has been very positive as well. No real squeaks, rattles, or anything in most cases. Now, of course, if you're doing extreme flexing, off-roading, anything like that, it definitely introduces the possibility of having some noise coming from the top, but on this daily drive so far, super quiet. We'll go ahead and throw it in sport mode for a minute, see how it does. Oh, that's interesting. So sport mode puts the uh, four-wheel drive system in for auto. So I assume that's for grip purposes. So if you're doing kind of sporty, um, off-road, all-terrain type of driving, the four-wheel drive system is always ready to go, give you the maximum grip that is available. Uh, but it is in for auto now. Oh, that's a lot of power for this little two-door. When it comes to the steering feel, I think it's quite good. Of course, you are sitting up quite high. You have large tires to kind of steer. They're quite heavy. So I will say it is a little bit leany or has a little bit of extra lean to it, but I will say it is quite good, pretty precise overall. Again, considering you do have uh, huge tires. Now this is independent front suspension in the Bronco. So that might have something to do with the slightly better overall steering it's not wandering quite as much as the wrangler but i will say it doesn't feel too far off from the wrangler does have a little bit of extra play in the wheel of course it's not going to go always dead center and it's not quick to react if you have a, an evasive maneuver or anything uh, so that is something you got to keep in mind with these vehicles is that if you have to make an evasive maneuver it's going to have a little bit more of a delay in the steering input and response of course with the all-terrain huge tires of this vehicle i will say though the seats definitely better than the wrangler um, honestly the wrangler seats are quite bad the most time that i've had in the new jl wrangler is with the leather option which i would 100 percent skip if you're looking at a new jeep wrangler do not get the leather seats they are not that good not that comfortable. The cloth is definitely the better option in the Wrangler. 
Um, I don't have too much experience, of course, here in the Bronco since this is my first drive, but these seats are quite good. These aren't even the power seats with a little bit more adjustability to them. They offer a good amount of thigh or leg support and uh, they have a lot of cushion to them. So they are quite comfortable and definitely a huge step up over the Wrangler. It's nice not having to worry about all these bumps and just garbage roads here in the Midwest, here in a Bronco or a Wrangler for that matter. Heck, even a full-size truck does fine over these roads. But I'm telling you, if you wanna drive a sports car or a sporty car with firm suspension on a daily basis, it's getting less and less desirable to do so when you got such poor road conditions. And I'm looking back here over my shoulder, I will say that window is definitely sits up or cuts off a lot of your visibility from kind of the rear downward portion. And if you're familiar with a two-door Wrangler, you'll know the hard top has a pretty large rear window, uh, sits pretty low, uh, basically kind of at your shoulder or arm height uh, when you're sitting in the back seat. And here in the Bronco, that window sits up much higher. So that would definitely impact my visibility looking over my shoulder this way. And of course you do have the B pillar in your way looking over towards the driver's side. So I would say rear visibility in the Bronco seems to be worse than that of the Wrangler. However, in terms of side and forward visibility, I would say it's no different, very comparable to that of a Wrangler. So that is something to consider is that visibility out the back, I wouldn't say is the best. Okay, so we are now getting ready to pull back into the dealership. And I have to say some of my final thoughts, I now understand the appeal of the Bronco quite a bit better than I did before. Um, although this is a large kind of chunky, heavy vehicle, it definitely will have a ton of off-road capability and it drives quite nice on the street. Uh, there's definitely plenty of power from the 2.7 twin turbo V6. Uh, the handling's overall pretty good for the Sasquatch, large wheels, lift, all that kind of stuff. Uh, really not much worse than the Wrangler. Um, you know, of course that vehicle is two solid axles. This one has independent front suspension, solid axle in the back. So still quite good, uh, but definitely a little bit different underpinnings for sure. And overall, yeah, I've been very impressed with this first drive, first impressions of the Bronco. Hey, there's another two-door Bronco, blue one. They gotta fix that Ford chime. That is so annoying. So that is gonna do it for my first drive and review of the new Ford Bronco. Well, I guess it's not so new anymore, but this one was the first one I was available, kind of open to me to drive. And I think I am very impressed. Like I said, there's a lot of things to like about the Bronco. I now better understand the desire behind it, even though it is definitely a larger, chunkier, heavier vehicle than that of a two-door Wrangler um, in a similar spec. So just keep that in mind as if you're going off-roading, going wheeling, this is going to be a bigger, wider vehicle for sure than that of a kind of more nimble, lightweight, smaller, compact Wrangler. However, they are both very capable. So there's not really any sacrifice, uh, just the overall footprint and size and weight. So if you guys enjoyed this first drive and walk around of this Bronco, please hit that like button below. It greatly helps out the channel and these videos. Let me know in the comment section below, are you team Bronco or are you team Wrangler? Personally, I think I'm still team Wrangler, although there are a few things about the Bronco I would wish come to the Wrangler, including better seats. I think that is something that Jeep could address relatively easily, just redesign the seat in the same bolt pattern, uh, really just stuff like that, give it a little bit different padding and a little bit different seating materials. I think that could go a long way in terms of the Wrangler lineup. Uh, but overall, I am very happy with the Wrangler. I think it is a pretty good value, although prices have crept up dramatically year over year, which is hard to kind of comprehend, especially a fully loaded one that in a two-door spec can get over $60,000. Now, in a Bronco, you can do the same thing, get well over $60,000 in a two-door spec. So as always, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.